for that by our next segment is my I apologize my and I want I'm so excited in fact I was reaching out to James Thompson uh, he works a lot with cyber security uh, cyber Florida as well and so we are so thrilled for your role with uh, cyber Florida and to hear what you have to offer us I turn it over to you Thank you very much, Karen. I'm Mai Ensman. I am the Assistant Cyber Program Manager at Cyber Florida. Cyber Florida is the Florida State Agency for Cybersecurity. We were founded um, by a legislative act back in 2014. Um, so our mission is to um, make Florida the national leader in cybersecurity. And we do this through our three pillars of education, research, and community engagement. We have a very robust education program, um, everything from K through 12 programming. Uh, we work with all of the state university system of Florida schools and their cybersecurity programs. And we also have a workforce development program, which is called um, CyberWorks. Um, so um, our CyberWorks um, program, um, we are part of a nine school consortium, um, the National Workforce Development Program, which is sponsored by, uh, which is funded by the NSA. And um, we receive our funding through their Centers for Academic Excellence in Cybersecurity. Um, so there are nine schools across the US um, offering different workforce development training programs. Our program focuses on the Cyber Defense Analyst Pathway. This is aligned to the NICE um, work role of Cyber Defense Analyst. Um, our program is a 18-week online um, program. Um, students work on their own, um, but then we also have three hours per week, which are live with an instructor. So. Um, Every, there's a nice group feeling. Um, people are supporting each other as they go through the program. Um, and um, at the completion, there's two courses for in the program. Um, the first is on networking, and then the second course is the Cyber Defense Fundamentals course. Uh, when students complete the program successfully, they receive the vouchers um, to take the CompTIA Network Plus and the CompTIA Cybersecurity Analyst Plus um, certifications. I should mention um, that the program is free of cost to our participants. Um, so our primary target for the program are veterans and transitioning first responders. We also open up the program for people from um, historically underrepresented groups in cybersecurity, meaning um, women, people of color, people with disabilities. So we have a really wonderful diverse group of professionals um, that we're putting through the program. Um, and I, um, yeah, I'll mention that um, the first two years of the program, we had 77 uh, professionals complete, and currently we have 44 um, learners enrolled. And they should be completing the program um, this coming June. Um, so um, we are expecting to hold our next cohort uh, starting this coming October. Um, we don't have the exact dates um, uh, set yet, but once we do, that will be up on our website. And of course, we'll be sharing that with everyone who's here. Um, you can go to the next slide. Thank you. Um, one of the um, aspects of our program that um, I'm quite proud of is our professional development program. So every week, we invite cybersecurity professionals um, virtually to speak with our participants about their role in cybersecurity, how they got started, and any tips or tricks for how to get into the cybersecurity field. Um, as many of you probably know, it can be extremely difficult to break into the field of cybersecurity. Um, if you don't have a lot of work experience, um, or if you're trying to pivot from one um, career into cybersecurity, it can be a daunting um, task. So um, having these professionals come in to speak with our students helps them to get over their um, imposter syndrome. It encourages them to um, network with these professionals. Um, we also offer a one-on-one -on -one mentorship with a career coach. So um, we have um, worked with a consultant who um, will give um, workshops on um, career readiness and um, getting your LinkedIn profile ready and working on your resume. Um, so they go through the workshop 
and then um, he will sit one on one with each student um, to work on whatever topic of their choosing. Um, so this also has been um, a tremendous help um, to getting our participants ready to start with their job search. Um, we also offer a networking event at the um, conclusion of the program, and this is not a job fair, but it's an opportunity for all of our participants and our alumni to come gather, and um, we invite the cybersecurity professionals in um, just for a nice casual evening of networking and hopefully making some good connections that will help um, with their um, job search moving forward. Um, and we also provide various career development workshops and resources for our students. Um, so there's a picture of the group. We did an in-person orientation. Um, the program is open to Florida residents. So um, while um, Cyber Florida is based at the University of South Florida in Tampa, um, so when we hold our in-person events, they have been in Tampa, um, but we are open to um, residents from just across the state. And we are looking to um, expand the program. Um, we're going to be finding out uh, shortly um, regarding ex uh, our additional funding for the program. So we are looking to have um, the next cohort start this October and maybe multiple cohorts across the state. And I can go to the next slide. And I just wanted to point out that um, we do work with various industry partners um, and then uh, our learners, when they complete the course, they receive um, digital badges, um, which they can include onto their LinkedIn profiles, as well as um, they do get the, the vouchers to take their certifications. So that um, that's the program in a nutshell. Um, I will. Um, Turn it over for questions if people have. The chat just opened. It will be open for five minutes. How was our enrollment in um, what sense? We do not provide housing. Um, and the minimum age to enroll in our program um, would be 18. So we are working with um, adult learners. Um, we don't enroll um, any undergraduate or um, graduate students into our program. Um, this is um, purely a, um, a program that's for adult learners. So most of our um, learners are you know they have a day job they have families so um we hold our um two well two of the sessions are held in the evenings monday and wednesday night and then the thursday at lunchtime is when we offer our professional development um series how are you finding entry level cyber jobs for those without a college education um I would say that actually um, all of our um, participants have um, college degrees already. Let's explain the diversity. Um, thank you, Lisa. My colleague Lisa just posted that um, in the chat. Um, so um, I don't have the number in front of me, unfortunately, but um, at this point, um, we have um, more women in our program than we have men, and um, we currently have, I believe it was 48% um, of our participants are African American. No, you are not excluded from our program if you did not go to college. Um, so the question about um, those without college degrees and high school diplomas obtaining entry level jobs, I don't know about that. I wouldn't be able to um, respond to that because um, all of the um, participants in our program have um, undergraduate degrees already. 
while that is not a requirement for entry into the program, um, that's just what we found, that, that these are the people who are attracted to entering the cybersecurity field. How do we overcome the two to three years of experience acquired for entry level jobs? That is also a very good question. Um, it's what we find is that the people who are successful from our program who are getting the jobs, they're the ones who um, are going to networking events, who are reaching out to employers and doing that on their own. Um, we encourage um, and we um, uh, train um, our participants to build their own home labs so that um, they can talk about that um, when they have job interviews. But that is one of the challenges. Average age. I do not know um, for sure the average age. I would say that um, it would skew, let's say, late 20s, people in their 30s, although we do have um, a retired um, principal who is um, in our program. So it really varies. Just looking. Um, so um, there, we don't offer an assessment to um, enter the program. Um, we do um, require folks to send us their transcripts, and then uh, we also interview um, folks to see um, if they would be a good match for our program. Um, so uh, the other schools in the program. Um, in Florida, there's also Florida International University and University of West Florida, then um, Cyber Florida at um, University of South Florida, um, Augusta University in Georgia, um, Metropolitan State University in Minneapolis, um, San Antonio College, University of Texas um, at San Antonio, and I may be blanking on the last two. Um, so they're really spread out. Oh, Dakota State University. Um, and I'm going to forget the last one. Um, but I can put into the chat in um, just a minute the, um, the um, website for the national program. Let me go ahead and get that. Just a second. I will put this in. So I just put in the chat the website for the national program. So you can look at all the various uh, programs that are being offered across the US. Um, I can say that the other programs, um, they are open to residents of any state. Um, we decided at Cyber Florida that since we are focused on um, the state of Florida that we want to keep it just to Florida residents for um, admission. Um, 